In this video, I'm going to be talking about the role of blood and the vessels. Blood vessels are, and blood are both part of the circulatory system. There are three main types of blood vessels. These are the arteries, capillaries and veins. However, there are five altogether blood vessels, but the main three are arteries, capillaries and veins. If you were to say the five, it would be arteries, arteries, capillaries, veins and venules. Blood vessels have a main job of transporting blood around the body. And then one of the main functions of the blood is to transport oxygen, proteins, cells, hormones and many substances around the body to tissues and organs. Blood has three main functions, which include transport, protection and regulation. The blood transports many substances around the body. For example, gases such as oxygen and carbon dioxide, nutrients such as proteins, fats, carbohydrates and much more. The next role of blood is protection. In the blood, white blood cells are found which fight infection. White blood cells are also known as leukocytes. Blood also carries platelets which help with protection by controlling blood clotting to help reduce blood loss. Finally is regulation. The blood helps to regulate the pH by interacting with bases, bases and acids. The blood also regulates the water balance by transferring water to and from tissues. Blood contains plasma, red blood cells and platelets, each which play a vital role in the functioning of the body. There are four main components of the blood. These include erythrocytes, leukocytes, platelets and plasma. Red blood cells are also called erythrocytes. They are a type of blood cell. Their main job is to transport oxygen from the lungs to tissues. Red blood cells transport oxygen for aerobic respiration. Here, oxygen is absorbed to the lungs, then passes in between narrow blood vessels and releases oxygen to respiring cells. The red blood cell is small and round. The cell is flexible and assumes certain shapes to pass through very small blood vessels. Red blood vessels contain haemoglobin, which combines with oxygen. Haemoglobin joins with oxygen in the lungs to form oxyhemoglobin. When the blood is travelling around the body, and it gets to the place where oxygen is being used up, oxygen is released by the oxyhemoglobin. It is no longer then called oxyhemoglobin as the oxygen has uncombined, returning it back to haemoglobin. Red blood cells have something called a bioconcove shape. This shape is so that they have a huge surface area so that they can therefore absorb lots of oxygen. Also, red blood cells have no nucleus so that they contain can contain more haemoglobin. Furthermore, red blood cells also have very thin membranes. This allows oxygen to diffuse through much quicker. White blood cells are also known as leukocytes. They are a type of immune cell. They help fight infectious diseases. White blood cells are made from bone marrow and are found all throughout the body. Leukocytes have three ways to destroy a pathogen. The first way is by ingesting them which destroys them. The second way is by producing antibodies, which lock onto the antigens and then destroy it. And then the final way is by producing antitoxins, which neutralize the effect of the toxins released by the pathogens. Leukocytes are the largest cells. They contain a nucleus, which is usually very large. Leukocytes can move around and seep all through the walls of blood capillaries to all parts of the body. They can change shape very easily. Now I'm going to be talking about platelets. Platelets are very small blood cells that help the body to stop bleeding by forming a clot over the injury sustained. When a blood vessel gets injured, it sends out signals that the platelets pick up. Many platelets join together to become a temporary scab where the skin heals itself. The platelets grow sticky tentacles when they get into the injury to stick to it. The platelets also send out chemical signals to attract more platelets to help block the injury and to prevent much blood loss. Platelets are made in bone marrow. Bone marrow is found inside bones and it's a spongy center. Platelets are the smallest of our blood cells and can only be seen under a microscope. Platelets are shaped essentially like small plates. They're round and thin. Platelets contain proteins which allow them to change their shape when they become sticky. The sticky surface allows them to stick to the other and the blood vessel. Platelets do not contain a nucleus.
plasma is a very light pale yellowish coloured liquid which is also found in the blood. Plasma makes up around 55% of the blood. The main job of plasma is to transport dissolved substances around the body. Some of the substances that plasma transports include antibodies, hormones, nutrients and some waste products. Plasma also carries water. Plasma itself is made up of around 91.5% water. Furthermore, cells deposit their waste products into plasma. This is because the plasma removes waste from the body. In addition to that, plasma also encourages the movement of all the elements of the blood through the circulatory system. All cells are surrounded by a plasma membrane. The membrane selects which molecules can and cannot enter and exit the cell. The fact plasma is made up of water allows the blood to flow freely through the blood vessels while transporting many different substances through the body. In the current, in the current of plasma, red and white blood cells are carried. Now I'm going to be talking about blood vessels structure and function. There are five different types of blood vessels. These are arteries, arteries, capillaries, venules and veins. Each blood vessel is structured differently to suit its function. The inner surface of each blood vessel has a very thin layer of cells lining them called the endothelium. The endothelium controls the passage of substances to and from the blood. Blood vessels have a tubeless structure which have a main role of transporting blood around the body. Now we're going to be talking about um, arteries. Arteries carry blood away from the heart. The blood from the heart is known as oxygenated blood, so it's rich in oxygen. So the blood which is carried from the heart is then transported by the arteries to tissues of the body. Also, oxygen and nutrients is delivered to every cell in the body by arteries. Arteries have a very thick muscular wall. This is because the blood has just been pumped straight from the heart, meaning that they are more able to withstand the pressure. The atrial wall expands and gets bigger with the force of each contraction, contraction of the heart. Then it recoils and snaps back to force the blood forward while the heart is at rest. Arteries have walls which consist of three layers. These are known as the tunica, tunica externia, which is also known as the adventica, which is the outer covering of the arteries. It is very strong. The outer covering is made up of collagen, connective tissues and elastic fibres. Collagen is a hard and fibrous protein. The next layer is called the tunica media, which is here. This is the middle layer. It is made up um, of smooth muscle and muscles and elastic fibres. The final layer is called the tunica intima. This is the inner layer, which is in contact with the blood, which is passing through the artery. Some arteries contain more smooth muscle tissue than others. The smaller the artery, the artery, sorry, the more smooth muscle there is. This is because it needs to control the changing pressure of the flow of blood. The pumping of the heart is the reason for this change in pressure. During the systole phase, the heart contracts. This forces blood through the arteries and increases the pressure. Whereas during this distal phase, diastole phase, the heart is relaxing, meaning that the blood pressure is low. As arteries transport blood away from the heart's left ventricles, the arteries divide and start to separate into smaller arteries. Then the arteries divide again and become even smaller, until they, they get to the point where they are not arteries anymore, but are called arteroles. Arteroles carry blood from arteries to capillaries and they also regulate blood flow and pressure. Arteroles are under the control of the sympathetic nervous system. The sympathetic nervous system is for aiding in survival. So if someone feels stressed or threatened, the heart rate and blood going to the muscles is increased. The arteroles constrict and dilate to regulate the flow of blood. They are also the main regulators of blood flow and pressure. Arteroles are, are tiny branches of arteries that lead to capillaries. Arteroles have muscular walls, usually made of smooth muscle. They are the primary site of vascular resistance. Vascular resistance is the resistance that needs to be overpowered to force blood through the circulatory system and create flow. Arteroles have very similar structure to arteries, as they are both strong, have a thick wall, and have a lot of smooth muscle. Chemical and electrical messages from the brain are sometimes responded to by arteroles. 
Our trolls also respond to the immune system messages, and they are always changing in size in response to those messages. The blood pressure then changes due to the blood flow, either speeding it up or slowing it down in response to messages received. The next blood vessel is capillaries. The arteries carry blood from arteries to capillaries. Capillaries have a main function of transferring oxygen and other nutrients from the bloodstream to other tissues in the body. They also pick up carbon dioxide to then return to the veins. Capillaries are the smallest blood vessels in the body. They have very thin walls which are only one cell thick. This is so that oxygen and other nutrients can pass through them by diffusion and enter the tissues. Also, so that waste products such as CO2, carbon dioxide, which is produced by the muscles, can be diffused back into the blood and transported away so that it can be therefore re removed from the body. The single layer which makes up their wall is called the endothelial cells. Capillaries are very small in diameter and just big enough for red blood cells to pass through them in a single file line. The flow of blood in capillaries is controlled by the structure which is called the precapillary sphincters. They are lo located between arteries and capillaries. There are muscle fibres inside them which permit them to contract. Blood flows freely, freely to the capillary beds of the body tissue when the sphincters are open, but when they are closed, blood cannot flow to the capillary beds. In capillary beds, Fluid is exchanged between the capillaries and the body tissues. As com capillaries converse, small venules are formed. Venules collect blood from capillary beds. They drain the blood from capillaries into veins for return to the heart. The blood they pick up is deoxygenated. Venules are made up of an endothelial tube, which is supported by small amounts of coll collagenous tissue then some large venules is supported by smooth muscle layers or fibres. Venules are smaller than veins but are bigger than capillaries. Venules form when capillaries come together. Then many venules come together then to form a vein. Venule walls consist of three layers. The endothelium, a middle layer of muscular and elastic tissue which helps to bind the whole structure together and then finally an outer layer made up of fibrous connective tissue that helps the vessel keep its shape. Venules are very porous so that fluid and blood cells can easily move from the bloodstream and through the venule walls. As well as transporting blood, venules also release white blood cells at sites where an infection has developed by slowly releasing fluid through the membranes. The final blood vessel is veins. Veins carry blood to the heart. The vena cava is the largest vein in the body. Most veins carry deoxygenated blood from tissues. Pulmonary veins, however, carry oxygenated blood from the lungs back to the heart, ready to be pumped throughout the rest of the body. Veins can hold large amounts of blood. This is due to their large amounts of lumen. Veins have large amounts of lumen so that blood is able to return towards the heart. Veins work with a skeletal muscle pump. Veins experience the least amount of pressure because they are the furthest away from the heart. Veins are not as muscular as arteries. Because of this, veins are usually close to the, closer to the skin. Big veins have pocket valves. These prevent the backflow of blood. Because veins are working against gravity to get blood to the heart, the valves keep the blood flowing to the heart. Veins have the same three layers as arteries do. The tunica intima, the tunica medialia, and the tunica externa. The layers are thinner and less elastic than arteries, however. As the vessel diameter decreases in size, the resistance increases. Overall, all the blood vessels all contain endothelium. Only arteries and veins contain elastic tissue. Arteries, arteries and veins all contain smooth muscle. And finally, the blood vessels which contain fibrous tissues are vein, venules and arteries. The autonomic, the autonomic nervous system controls the functioning of the blood vessels throughout the body. The autonomic nervous system is the involuntary movements of non-skeletal muscles.